Good afternoon. Welcome to the grand opening ceremony for the Murchie Science Building expansion at the University of Michigan Flint. My name is Susan Gano Phillips and I am Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm speaking to you today from the West Atrium of this beautiful 61,000 square foot addition to our existing science building. I am so glad that so many of you have joined this live broadcast. In this time of isolation, it's exciting that nearly 500 of us can come together in this virtual meeting space to enjoy this wonderfully celebratory event, which has been more than five years in the making. The symbolism of so many students, staff, faculty, alumni, friends, and supporters of this institution coming together to celebrate this new building project at the beginning of this new year is a powerfully optimistic statement. While we wish we could have been gathered together in person for this event, we're cognizant of the pervasiveness of the pandemic, and we are practicing social distancing and following public health guidelines for the delivery of today's event. We look forward to the day when you can come and visit the campus safely and can enjoy the features of this new building in person. Like all construction projects, the planning for this new building was years in the making. In the summer of 2015, I began conversations with faculty to develop our capital outlay request for the state of Michigan. It began by envisioning what kind of new academic space we wanted, one that broke the mold of traditional classrooms and laboratories. We sought input from across campus where we began by asking a very simple question. What does the future of STEM education look like? With guidance from our design manager, John Hill, and our architect team at HED, we decided to pursue several forward-looking design features in this expansion, including innovative cross-disciplinary and collaborative spaces, which provide opportunities to blur the boundaries of pedagogical approaches and ways of learning, flexible and adaptable spaces to meet the needs of STEM fields for the next 40 or 50 years. Putting science on display and showcasing STEM education as a means to recruit talented students and faculty. Building a sense of community for our largely commuter students and ensuring space to engage with our broader community, whether that be K-12 students, industry partners, or others. And finally, we wanted to pursue sustainable construction and operating practices. These features are important, so let me reiterate. This building is about our future, and its design is intended to foster innovation, promote interdisciplinary collaboration, and enhance student success and job readiness. I'm sure you'll see these design features as we share more about the building this afternoon. We broke ground on this building on a cold, blustery day in October of 2018. Not many feet, actually, from where I'm currently standing. And I know many of you joined us to mark this milestone event as well. With the steady hand of Eric Miller, our project manager from Ann Arbor, and our facilities and operations team here on the Flint campus, led by Dan Sherman, the project got underway. And like all construction initiatives, there were some, some surprises along the way. But unlike other construction projects, this one has been impacted by the global pandemic. In spite of the necessary work stoppage to help mitigate the spread of the virus and other, uh, excuse me, and other issues that arose as construction restarted, the project has actually finished very close to the timeline we had originally intended. We are very excited to celebrate this important addition to our campus today. So now, here is your first look at the building. If you've watched the web camera during construction, this view may not surprise you very much. But if you haven't been to campus lately, you can really appreciate the size of this addition and its modern design from this photo. It appears to dwarf the existing Murchie Science building behind it. To orient you, 
The Mill Street parking ramp would be to your left on this image, while the University Center can barely be seen on the far right. And you can see the new Circle Drive in front of the University Center in the foreground. Here's the lobby when you enter off of Mill Street. You'll find easy access to stairs or the elevator to get to all four floors of the expansion here. And administrative offices are just to your right and down the stairs when you enter. This third picture shows the main corridor on the fourth floor of this building. The expansion connects directly to the existing Murchie Science Building on floors one, three, and four. In this view, you are seeing less than half of the length of the expansion. Now, we will have more photos and a video tour of the building a bit later in this event, but don't let me get ahead of myself. I would like to begin by welcoming the mayor of the city of Flint, Mr. Sheldon Neely, who was here with us a couple of years ago at our groundbreaking event to offer remarks. Mayor. Well, good afternoon and thank you all. This is a great day and I wanna thank God first because this is a, a really great event and so we can really take a look around us as, as it was stated, I was here for the groundbreaking ceremony when we started this, uh, this venture and now we're seeing these great ideas and these great plans coming to fruition. The young minds that's gonna be educated as a byproduct of this new facility, 61,000 square feet is a magnificent achievement. This will help close the gap and be the keystone to help our STEM education programs throughout our country, our state, and our community. You know, as we talk about the Murchie Building, the Science Building, we gotta talk about growth. We gotta talk about the reality of where we're moving forward in this community. You know, once as a great manufacturing mecca in the world, now we're trying to shift and change the mindset to use our intellectual capital and to invest heavily in this area. And this is the byproduct of those investments. We have many partners locally, on a state level, as well as the, the intellectual capital of the University of Michigan, uh, Ann Arbor and Flint here. And so today I wanna offer the thanks for the partnerships that were offered to make this happen. And we gotta know that the investments that were made will yield a greater return for our society over and over. I coined the phrase, uh, prayer, planning, and partnership. And that's what we see today. This is a happy day. As you can see, my, as I bring a little sunshine with my tie, uh, so we all should be smiling and feeling a little bit better about what is going on in our community and our state. So thank all of you who are participating in this activity. Thank all of you that will participate by way of being educated here, teaching here, and just being a great partner. And as I think about great partnerships, I think about a partnership in which I shared with uh, a person I call my big little brother. Uh, as, on the state level, uh, where, as a state representative, him as a senator. On the local level, as city council, we, sh we serve together. And I could think of no greater partner to have in this type of event to welcome all of you and to congratulate the University of Michigan for having this building and the science building here than none other than Senator Jim Ananek, my great friend, I now yield to you. Thank you very much, Mayor Neely. We appreciate your joining us today and we truly appreciate your partnership in this event. Our next speaker played a critical role in helping the campus to gain the support necessary for the building project in the Michigan legislature. He is Senate Minority Leader Jim Ananick, a proud U of M Flint alum who represents the 27th District in Genesee County. Senator Ananick. Thank you very much. Uh, it's truly a pleasure to be here. Uh, U of M Flint uh, plays a very special uh, part in my life. Uh, it's got a very, uh, very, very close to my heart. Uh, my father was a non-traditional student. He uh, dropped out of high school uh, and had struggles when he was younger, went to the Army, and when he got out, my mother pushed him to go back and get his GED first at Mott and then come over to U of M Flint and get his bachelor's degree. Uh, unfortunately, when I was 10 years old, my mother passed away, so when my father was getting his master's here in public administration, I spent a lot of days with him in many of the buildings over here, whether at the rec center and otherwise. So I remember in 1988, when this building was built 
in the first place. Uh, and it was a, a great example uh, and a really great addition to the campus, providing tremendous programs for students at all different levels. Uh, so to be a part <coughs> of a uh, small part of helping to bring this beautiful expansion to fruition and to see the kind of wonderful programs uh, both for the jobs of today but more importantly for the jobs of tomorrow uh, is, is, is I'm very proud of that. Um, uh, as was mentioned, I'm a U of M alumnus myself. I got a master's of public administration just like my father did uh, and it always brings me uh, great memories to walk on this campus, uh, memories of being with him, memories of the wonderful things I learned all throughout this campus and the classes I took uh, and even the memories I get to have now of bringing my son over uh, to the campus to play on the, at the Recreation Center. So I want to welcome uh, and say congratulations to U of M uh, Flint and all that work here, all the students. Uh, this, is, this is your building and it's going to be a tremendous asset uh, to all of your learning and to this beautiful campus. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Senator Ananick, both for your support of the capital outlay project and generally for our region of the state. We were really glad you're able to join us today. Now, let's take a peek at two additional new spaces in the building. This first picture shows our new learning commons, a student-centered space of which there are many in this building. It's designed to promote peer-to-peer -peer learning as well as to be used for tutoring, supplemental instruction, and informal gatherings between faculty and students. Now, you may note in this picture we're missing a few tables. This is a COVID delay of delivery of some of our furnishings, but uh, we can't wait for the rest of the furnishings and equipment to arrive and for us to have everything in place when you're able to come back to campus. This is a two-story space. It's designed to promote student connections and success. And as you can see, there is a lot of room to spread out and a place for everyone to find a home away from home when they're here on campus between classes. This next picture shows one of our four active learning classrooms. While this room may look quite ordinary upon first glance, the technology in this room is truly phenomenal. It will transform what's possible in STEM classrooms at UM Flint, allowing flipped classrooms collaborative learning, and maximal flexi flexibility. The wireless technologies allow group collaboration on large monitors that you can see around the room, the ability to display group work for the entire class, digital enhancements of learning, and more, all at the touch of an instructor's iPad or other device. And this room is completely configurable. In minutes, you can move from groups of four to groups of eight, you can move from traditional rows of tables and chairs to storing the tables out of the way for a group activity or poster session. Ridgeway White is the president of the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation and a philanthropist who has positively benefited the Flint community in, in countless ways. Without the foundation's support, we would not have been able to complete this expansion project. Thank you, Ridgeway and the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation. I recall seeing Ridgeway around town on several occasions over the past few years, and barely a conversation went by between he and I without him asking, when will the building be done? Well, I'm happy to report, despite reduced campus density of students due to the pandemic, our first two courses began meeting in this building earlier this month. Unfortunately, Ridgeway was unable to be with us today, but he did want to extend his thoughts on this important day via this brief video. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, I just watched the most amazing video of the new Murchie Science Building. It had everything from wind tunnels to really collaborative spaces for all of the technology that we're exploring now and into the future. And this building really is going to be a place for future innovators that come from Flint. And so my hat's off to Chancellor Dutta and the entire team of staff that made this vision a reality. Once again, you're pushing Flint forward. You're pushing the education continuum in Flint forward from cradle to college and career. And we're so excited at the Mott Foundation to be a part of that, to support this vision, and to help you as you move forward 
into this new endeavor. Now, I'd be remiss to say that it hasn't been a challenging year. And so I really do want to say that it's a major feat that you've accomplished all of this while keeping your students and staff and faculty safe and really excited for what this building and the new College of Technology will mean for Flint's resurgence as we come out of this virus, this tough time period, into a new, new era of thinking and excitement that can move the economy and Flint forward and move the education continuum forward in a positive way. So thank you and best wishes for all the great experiments that are gonna occur in this new building. Thank you, Ridgeway, for your incredible support. Mott Foundation, we truly appreciate your support as we work to better serve students throughout the city, the region, and the world. We are keenly aware that this campus sits literally at the heart of this city. It is our hope that this new building is viewed as an addition that manifests discovery and invention that will lead to a bright, promising future for our students and this community. We look forward to seeing reverberations of the effects of the MSB expansion in the city for years to come. The MSB expansion is arguably the most unique academic space on the UM Flint campus. From the University of Michigan solar car that hangs immediately above us in this atrium, to the cutting edge lab spaces and collaboration hubs, this building exemplifies the commitment of our university to making STEM education accessible to all and to preparing all of our students to be creative thinkers and leaders in a world where change is ever present. But this building is not just about STEM education. It is proof that a broad liberal arts and sciences education that all UM students experience is vital to our community's future success. You can't have STEM without the essentials of a comprehensive liberal arts education that UM Flint is known for in this region. The pandemic and the politics of the last year have proven to us how essential it is that scientists are capable of communicating their findings, working collaboratively to solve problems, and understanding the ethics of their actions. Just as our liberal arts graduates must be literate at processing data and understanding and interpreting scientific research. This building actually represents interdisciplinary studies in action that will lead to well-rounded individuals that are ready to face the challenges of the future. Now I'd like to introduce you to a couple of additional spaces of innovation in our building. Our club hub developed as a result of our conversations with students during the planning phases of the building. Designed as another student success initiative, the club hub is a space in which student organizations and clubs can hold meetings and gather informally. It can also be used to host guest speakers, networking events, and interactions with alumni and industry partners. Enhancing leadership skills and networking, crucial for today's graduates. Technology will allow room reservations or scheduling of this and many other spaces in the building from a touch screen right at the door. The Club Hub was generously sponsored by the M Club of Greater Flint. Their board of directors and members are providing a leadership gift of $50,000 to support programming and activities for students on the Flint campus. Thank you, M Club leaders and members, for your ongoing partnership with the Flint campus. We so appreciate your valuing our students' holistic learning experiences and modeling a pay-it-forward model of philanthropy. The next image shows a new research lab that is a first for our campus. It is innovative both in its size and its intended uses. Built as a large multidisciplinary collaborative lab, several faculty members or students can use this space simultaneously. And the design is flexible to allow the lab to function differently at different points in time, depending upon the research that needs to occur. With reconfigurable tables and accesses to gas and water from the ceiling. We cannot wait to see what our biology, 
chemistry and biochemistry students and faculty discover in this new lab. Now, perhaps for the moment you've been waiting for, we would like to share a video tour of our building. Earlier this month, we had a film crew in the building as we were putting the finishing touches on it, and we are pleased to share this with you. Wow, isn't that exciting? Such sleek new spaces are sure to inspire creative energy and all sorts of new discoveries in the years to come. Now please join me in welcoming Chancellor Deba Dutta, the eighth chancellor of the University of Michigan Flint. Chancellor Dutta. Thank you and good afternoon everyone. I'm very pleased to be with all of you to celebrate this wonderful new addition to U of M Flint. Let's agree that to have this construction project completed on time during the pandemic, it's nothing short of a miracle. Many thanks to Dean Gano Phillips, Dean Chris Pearson, and to my predecessor and former chancellor, Sue Borrego, for their vision and leadership on this project. My thanks also goes to Eric Miller, project manager, and Dan Sherman, of facilities and operations. They ensured that the work was completed on time and all the details were handled to the highest standards. Thank you. No big project like this is the work of one team or one organization. It is a result of partnerships. So I want to express my gratitude to all our partners today, to Ridgeway White and the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation for their ongoing support of this campus dating back to its inception. Almost every building on this campus has been built or improved with the support and partnership of the Mott Foundation. Thank you all for what you have done and all that you continue to do. 
thanks to Senator Ananek and his colleagues in the Michigan legislature for approving the capital outlay funding that made, its, made this building possible. My appreciation also to Mayor Sheldon Neely for his support while he was in the legislature and now for his leadership of our city. To the mayor and the senator, UM Flint looks forward to working with you as we build new collaborations to drive economic development in the region. And my thanks to UM Regent Mike Beam for joining us. Regent Beam continues to be a very strong advocate for this campus and for this community. Thanks to all of you. Now this building feels like innovation in action. And do you know why? With all the technology that surrounds us, the robots and the chatbots, ideas and innovation still only comes from one source, humans. And for creativity and innovation to take hold, humans need design spaces that facilitate group work, focus, ideate, incubate, and communicate. That's how innovation happens. Look around this building as you have seen in the shots before me. You will see a lot more than labs. You will see an environment that supports creativity and innovation. Very soon, we hope, students from science and engineering will work in teams with students from arts and the humanities. That is how innovation happens. And finally, this new facility also helps the College of Innovation and Technology, which is our new college, and will open this fall. The active classrooms, engineering labs, robotics and rapid prototyping equipment, all of these would be very useful for the programs that we are launching and the programs that are already here. So to all the faculty who are working hard to set up the labs, and classrooms, please know that we are very appreciative of your dedication to making this new wing come alive for teaching, learning, and research. And finally, to our students, this new facility is for you. It is my hope that within these walls, classrooms, labs, and collaborative spaces, you will gain knowledge, challenge convention, build experience, and prepare your future career. Thank you and go blue. Thank you, Chancellor Dutta. We look forward to getting this building operating at the speed of students, as you like to say, as soon as we're safely able to do so. We, like you, see this expansion as part of the renaissance of this campus, as we build stronger and deeper community and industry partnerships to enhance the economic and social development of this city and our region. University of Michigan Regent Michael Beam is also with us today. As a community member, supporter of our campus, and chair of the newly created Regional Campus Subcommittee of the Board of Regents, I would like to welcome Regent Beam back to campus today. Regent Beam. Thank you, Sue. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd just like to thank uh, well, everyone involved today, uh, and on behalf of the U of M Board of Regents, uh, Chancellor Dutta, uh, his leadership team here at U of M Flint, and then also other uh, partners here uh, involved with this operation today and with the opening of the Murchie Science Building expansion, uh, the mayor and his team, uh, also the legislature, and Jim Ananick, who you uh, heard from, uh, that is a long process uh, in order to get a building like this uh, put on our campus here, which is very important and something our community should be very proud of. Uh, I'd also just like to point out a few things, and you've heard some of these things mentioned before, uh, but this building really is a fantastic example of a public-private partnership, uh, and uh, that's really a path forward today, and I think uh, and I hope uh, that we'll have more opportunities uh, to participate in public-private partnerships. This building, I remember this building in, I think it was 1988 when it was built, the Murchie Science Building. Uh, I took classes here in 87 uh, when uh, it was being built. 
and it really supports the mission of the university as a whole, and then also part of the technology orientation uh, that uh, U of M Flint uh, is pursuing uh, with the College of Innovation and Technology, which makes the Flint region attractive to business uh, and uh, also to create jobs. Uh, these really, I, I encourage everyone to come down and take a look uh, at the expansion here of the Murchie Science Building. It truly is state of the art. The facilities are fantastic. Uh, they're essential to our growing enrollment here at U of M Flint. Uh, and they're really what, this building is what our students have asked for. Uh, they want collaborative spaces, they want labs, uh, they want uh, classrooms that aren't uh, just where you listen to a lecture, but where you exchange ideas with your fellow students and professors. Uh, so the board is very excited, uh, and on behalf of the board, I'd like to say thanks again to everyone for having me here today, but also congratulations on the expansion, and the board is very excited uh, to continue uh, to support uh, U of M Flint's campus and uh, its move toward the future. Go Blue. Thank you, Regent Beam and the entire Board of Regents for your support of the campus. At this time, I would like to invite our Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Sanja Fees Price and Chancellor Dutta to join me up at the front to unveil our latest fundraising initiative, the Elements of Success Donor Wall. The idea for this fundraising campaign came from chemistry faculty member, Dr. S Jessica Tischler. With the help of our team in university advancement, it has become a reality. Donors who wanted to support student success amongst our disciplines contributed a minimum of $1,000 to become an element of success on our periodic table of elements. These funds will be used to support students in their research, club and organization activities, and other student-focused initiatives in the years to come. And this installation will serve as an enduring record of the support of our faculty, staff, alumni, friends, and community members who have joined together with us to ensure our students' success and ultimately their graduation from this great university. Thank you to each and every one of the donors who have invested like the faculty and staff of this university in the success of our students. And now, the unveiling. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Wow, wasn't that spectacular? What an enduring reminder to students how many individuals are rooting for their success and graduation from this university. Thank you again to all who have made this campaign for our students a great success. Chris Pearson was recently named the inaugural Dean of the College of Innovation and Technology, which is launching this fall on the UM Flint campus. Over the past years, excuse me, over the past five years while serving as the Associate Dean in the College of Arts and Sciences, Chris Pearson championed the design and implementation work that resulted in this spectacular building. He ably served as a liaison from the design team and construction management to the faculty and staff of the various STEM disciplines. His work, along with many others, was extensive and exacting. There is hardly a wall, a window, a piece of equipment or an electrical outlet in this building, which Dean Pearson did not personally review and authorize. Thank you, Chris, for your immeasurable contributions to this campus through the work on this building. Now, I'd like to ask Dean per Pearson to say a few words. Thank you, Dean Gano Phillips, and also thank you for your dedication in seeing this project through. It has been a joy listening to the remarks and comments 
of the previous speakers and watching video and viewing pictures of this wonderful addition to the campus. I am honored to make a few additional remarks regarding this significant investment that will transform student learning. First, it is important to remember that the entire project would not have been possible without the approval from the State of Michigan Capital Outlay Committee and the continued support of the Mott Foundation and Mr. Ridgeway White. From initial concept, it was clear that the building would have features that are unique to the campus. The intentionality placed on collaborative areas during design development led to this building in which collaborative areas are pervasive throughout. Thanks are due to the design team of Harley Ellis and Devereaux who were able to take the wonderful ideas from UN Flint students, faculty and staff, and especially the Thompson Library staff to create these great collaborative learning environments. What you have just viewed and are currently viewing are the large collaborative areas located on the third and fourth floors on the east end of the building. Whether students choose to study informally or grouped around a table with a monitor displaying output from their device, these spaces will accommodate them. You have already heard about and viewed the Learning Commons, which is a key feature in the building, and you have just viewed the large collaborative areas on the third and fourth floors. However, there are a multitude of additional spaces for students to gather. Often for project work, a student team desires an area that is more private yet still collaborative. Numerous teaming rooms are located throughout the building for just this purpose. Towards the rear of the smaller collaborative space that you are now viewing are two such teaming rooms. All teaming rooms are reservable through a touchscreen input device located at the entry to each room. The rooms vary in size to accommodate different size teams ranging from a small six person team all the way up to a 12 person team. All teaming rooms are similar to the one with the one that you are viewing with the wall mounted monitor to display the output from a mobile device. These rooms are can also be used by our industry partners for job fairs and interviews. The collaboration theme carries through the instructional lab spaces as well. When UM Flint students graduate and embark upon their careers, they find that teamwork is the norm within industry as problems continue to increase in complexity. Group learning within the instructional lab emulates this setting and prepares graduates to be part of a talented workforce for the region. Thanks are due to the engineering faculty and technician, Mr. Greg Keller, for their input into the design of the labs and selection of the equipment. $2 million has been invested into new equipment outfitting the instructional labs. This significant investment allows students access to equipment that is current with industry. Students in engineering, as well as those in the College of Innovation and Technology, and others who enroll in courses or join student clubs will experience this investment firsthand. The first floor shop area functions as the main building area for student projects. In addition to the computer controlled mills and lays, it also has a welding area, which I know excites the Baja team, whose car is visible in the background, and a separate area for wood construction and a dedicated paint booth. The design lab, located adjacent to the shop, has several 3D printers for rapid prototyping. Parts can be printed in many different types of plastics, as well as carbon fiber and even metal. The availability of such printers gives rise to the additive manufacturing. For thousands of years, humanity has used subtractive manufacturing. Cut down a tree, hollow out the trunk by subtracting material, and a canoe is created. 3D printing allows for additive manufacturing, building up a part from nothing. Of course, a building must be constructed, and thanks are due to the Commercial Contracting Corporation for executing the design. The interface provided by architecture, engineering, and construction from the Ann Arbor campus was also critical to the project. Facilities and operations, especially the contributions of Ryan Craven and Dan Sherman, are also recognized and appreciated. While 2020 provided all of us a lot of uncertainty, what we do know with certainty is that for many years to come, students will be working alongside faculty, solving problems, and creating innovative solutions right here. Today, we celebrate a ribbon cutting and unwrapping of the building. Tomorrow, and all the days that follow, celebrate the unwrapping that happens 
when students are transformed by education that allows them to soar. Thank you and go blue. Thank you, Chris, both for those remarks and for your outstanding contributions to the building. It has been my honor and privilege to work alongside you and the many others who have labored long and hard to see this project to its fruition. I think the Nigerian proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, could be rephrased and applied to our expansion project as well. It did truly take a village to raise a 21st century science building. And I'm eternally grateful to all of those individuals, both named and unnamed, who have helped to make this building a reality. Now we have one final activity today, and that is to cut the ribbon to officially open the Murchie Science Building. Chancellor Dutta and all of today's presenters, will you join me to do the honors? With this ribbon cutting, the Murchie Science Building expansion is officially opened. A new era for STEM education at UM Flint has arrived. Thank you, everyone. Today's events would not have happened without the support and engagement of so many. Staff from Event and Building Services and Information Technology Services, Jen Hogan, Director of Marketing and Digital Strategy, Logan McGrady, Communications Specialist, and Sheila Courier from University Advancement. Thank you for all that you do to keep the campus connected and events running smoothly. And to our audience today, Thank you for attending this grand opening celebration. We hope that you've been inspired by the possibilities that this new facility offers, and we cannot wait to see all the students and what they will create, build, test, discover, and achieve in the years to come as we prepare graduates for work in engineering, technology, healthcare, and so many additional fields in this building. Welcome to the fourth industrial revolution. Thanks to so many, our students will help lead this revolution in the future. Have a great afternoon, and as always, go blue. <laughs>